Well, it is upon us. Flounder season is here. You know, I know a lot of guys, if you're anything like me, you love this time of the year. I am a big flounder fisherman. I really enjoy catching flounder. Well, this year is going to be a little different, though. Because during the peak time of flounder season, during the peak time of the flounder run, we're not going to be able to harvest fish. The fishery is, it's a full closure. And the first time we've ever had closure of the flounder fishery. Now, when I first heard this, I was in, I was in disbelief like many of you all. And uh, I have questions, right? I mean, why are we having the closure? Um, what's led up to this? Could we possibly have this closure every single year? I mean, to many fishermen, it's, it's alarming. For the simple fact that you can really get on those flounders during the run, during the peak time of the season. I mean, I saw it last year. Captain Cody and myself went on a trip, one particular trip, where we probably caught around 50 flounder between us. So with those kind of numbers, why are, what are we scared of? Why can't we not harvest the fish? Now, having those questions, I reached out to Texas Park and Wildlife and was able to get an interview with a couple of great biologists in our area to ask them just those questions. And the big question for me is, will we be see this? Will we see this type of closure every year? Hey everybody, what's going on? Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. I am out here with two great people. I'm out here with today with Alexa Ballinger and Chris Stevan. And well, we're going to talk about some flounder, flounder season, flounder fishing. Okay, as far as our new regulations that took place over the last year or so, uh, we have uh, increased the minimum size for keeping flounder from 14 to 15 inches and in addition to that this year we have our first full closure to all take of flounder so that runs from november 1st through december 14th whereas in the past gigging was not allowed in the month of november now no take of flounder is allowed through those dates from the first through december 14th so that's our new closure season one of the questions i want to ask is like what transpired to getting those uh the closure what um as far as like, as far as what did we see to to make the closure happen so we have our uh with tpwd we have our consistent monitoring that we've been doing over the last 45 years or so and with this we have the same gears that we use every year uh, it's a very standardized process and between those gears and our harvest numbers between recreational and commercial excuse me we've seen a steady decline in the flounder population from that data uh, you can see short-term increases decreases in the population so you know some years might show better numbers than others but the end all be all is that that over that 45 years we have just seen that long-term steady decline in our gears and our sampling and uh, that decline is that based on water temperature because I was talking to somebody I was talking to Jeff and Jeff said it probably it was, mm -hmm. I think it was based on water temperature uh, yes and Jeff he is with our one of our hatcheries at Sea Center Texas so he's very knowledgeable on all the the larval flounder and the rearing that they're doing over there to try and stock some of these fish um, we we do believe that you know the overall climate change and increasing temperatures in the Gulf in the Gulf waters where these fish go to spawn um, could be throwing off recruitment to the population year to year so not only does temperature kind of act as an environmental cue for these fish to move offshore and spawn but it also has an effect on the larval fish themselves and can actually masculinize the population because flounder are very sensitive to fluctuations in temperature outside of their optimal range which is around 18 degrees celsius or 65 degrees fahrenheit um give or take maybe one to three degrees max and if the temperature falls outside of that range then you have more of those larval fish developing into males than females which is bad because obviously males are not producing the eggs that are producing more fish so 
Um, it temperature is kind of coming into play from multiple directions as far as you know that migration offshore and then also the sex ratio of the population and and i was going to talk to you chris real fast about um the flounder i mean what is a flounder run what is flounder season why why i know we i know that they migrate but what is the purpose behind them moving off inshore into deeper water yeah so as alexa said uh southern flounder are very susceptible to fluctuations in temperature and they react differently to different temperatures. So during times of cold fronts or colder weather, uh, the water temperatures will drop and that's sort of an environmental cue, as she said, to migrate to warmer, deeper water. So we call them thermal refuges. And so that's why a lot of the Southern Fonder will migrate through these passages like, you know, St. Louis Pass or the Galveston Ship Channel to make it offshore. Um, but the caveat to that is that that also leads them highly susceptible to increased fishing pressure. So because they migrate- And that's when I come in. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So because they migrate through these fishing passages, especially in Texas, right, our, our systems have limited passages and exchanges with the Gulf. Um, they're very easy to target. And right. so during those periods of increased movement, uh, the fishing pressure and mortality from fishing is much higher. And so that's part of the reason the closure exists as well, is to try and protect some of these fish and allow them to escape and spawn. Right, because they really get funneled through those, those really those two major ways in and out the Gulf as far as the chip channel. And yeah, exactly. And, and, and uh, for us here locally. Yeah, we've only got two major right. inlets and outlets right. to the Gulf. And so you know, if you're not protecting those during peak migration periods, right. uh, they're going to get targeted pretty heavily. And do you do you see this happening? I know, I mean, within the your community or within the Texas Park and Wildlife, do y'all see this being a closure every year, or is this is going to be a discussion every year whether it close the season or not? It's definitely we're always keeping an eye on it. Like I said, we are continuous monitoring. That standardized monitoring is ongoing. We have samples every month, the same samples, and we're always conducting our creel surveys and getting that information from the anglers as well as the commercial fishermen as well. Um, so we will closely monitor it, but for to really see a regulation change like this take place, you really need to see a full life cycle, a full um, you know generation of fish come through. So with flounder, you know, if they're aging to maturity around two, two years of age, and then, um, you know, it could take anywhere two, three, four years to really see this generation of fish that we will be affecting with this closure this year and see those numbers later down the road as adult fish. Okay. So, so with this closure, you're probably not going to see any benefits or results from until three or four a years. A few years down yeah. the road, yes. So it's possible that we could have a closure next year as well. It is possible. It's definitely possible. Yeah. yeah, and one thing to keep in mind too, the, the lifespan of a, a fully grown female is only about seven years. So if they don't reach maturity until two years, you're really only effectively, you've only got five year classes to work with. Okay. So there's a little bit of a delay in that as well. Okay. And so that's why we see, you know, some people of course are saying we've had the best flounder fishing we've had this year. How, why are you changing these regulations now when we're seeing these awesome fish? And I mean, it all kind of boils down to a few years ago, you know, 2016 was one of our lower recruitment years, but then it kind of shot up a little bit near 2018. And then we had, you know, there was less fishing pressure after Harvey came through. And then we had, you know, you have weather events, you have hurricanes, you have freezes, all sorts of things. So you really cannot make a judgment call based on the fish you're seeing right now, right. the snapshot and extrapolate that to the entire population. Because like I said, any population can undergo, if, if you have optimal environmental conditions that support a good recruitment class this year, then in a few years you might see a lot of really good fish. But we cannot guarantee good recruitment for the next few years. And so if we don't do anything now and we have three super warm winters in a row, then you could pop, you might see a huge population crash. And so what we're trying to do is offset that by being proactive about right. setting these regulations. 
staying ahead of the curve. Exactly. Yeah, yeah and additionally to that, I mean, Sea Center's obviously got a new flounder uh, facility where they're trying to, you know, revamp the stocking program and be able to get the southern flounder numbers up as far as what they're stocking in the bay systems. So that's another thing where in a controlled environment, if you can succeed at that, that's a way of offsetting some of these, you know, if we have really warm winters, we can offset that male skewed ratio where you're producing more males and females. And so hopefully, you know, that's one of the things we're trying to do is, is uh, supplement the population so that it is sustainable. And I did, I talked to Jeff a little bit earlier. I think he said since 2006, they have actually stocked uh, around, it was either four to 500,000 flounder wow. on somewhere along the coast um, since 2006. And they're getting, every day they're getting closer and closer to streamlining that process, making it more efficient. I, think, I guess just the, the final takeaway with everything is because it seems to be a lot of temperature dependent things that we're looking at here, mm -hmm and that is something we cannot control. Like our biggest toolbox, our biggest tool in the toolbox here at Parks and Wildlife is, you know, controlling the harvest of this species. Cause that's really, we can't control nature. We can't control the water temperatures of the Gulf. So we're hoping to just offset that decline from those natural changes as much as we can and keep the population sustainable. Because we love you guys. We love our stakeholders. Yeah. We love the fish too. You're so right. yeah, yeah <laughs> we're with you. <laughs> we fish for flounder too. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, hopefully everybody realizes that the closure ideally won't, won't last forever. And during this year's run, hopefully people practice catch and release if they're catching them. And uh, hopefully we can keep the population sustainable in the future. So absolutely. Because I mean, I know. Well, I just want to thank. Texas Park and Wildlife, thank you, thank you very much for making this interview possible for me and those that had the hand to make sure, they had their hand in to this process to make sure this was able to happen. And also thank you to Alexa and Chris for taking the time out. I know you guys are extremely busy. This is a very busy time of the year. The big takeaway from this all is that this really is going to fall. To see if this works, this really is going to fall on the angler, the fisherman, and fisherwomen's shoulder in regards to staying within the bag limits during the entire fishing year, but especially during the flounder run or especially during the closure of the flounder fishery is just to practice catch and release. And then we'll wait and we'll see and hopefully we won't have this closure again. But if we do, we all need to do our part to make sure that we leave a healthy sustainable fishery not just for us but also for the flounder and our future generations that way our kids and grandkids can enjoy fishing a very healthy flounder fishery well i hope you enjoyed this video i had a great time talking to chris and alexa and the other members of their biologist team off camera you know, I really geek out to this stuff. This stuff is a lot of fun for me, you know, just getting that information and mixing it up and, and gaining the knowledge and answering the questions. We talked quite a bit off camera as well. But I hope that, again, I can't stress enough, I hope you please practice catch and release during the closure of the flounder season. And hopefully next time you catch me, hook it up. Thanks.